lengthy title, but really we're just putting both terms of the potential energy we know now together in one go. Procedure is going to be very much the same, but as you have more and more things to keep track of, it's even more and more important to have a good presentation to help you keep track of everything. And part of a good presentation for doing energy problem is of course drawing a before and after picture. So the before picture looks like these. So that's the side of the trampoline and then here's your little elastic trampoline thing and your person right here where we're saying that that's H1. And then afterwards your trampoline becomes undeformed and you get as high as H2. We can define my h equals 0 to be here and pause it that away. And then because we have both the gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy, we have to track height as well as my deform length. My speed in both cases, at the very bottom, when the trampoline is fully sunk in, you're not moving. At the very top, when you're just about to change from going up to going down, you're instantaneously not moving, so that's also 0. For your h1, that's what we're after. That's the compression distance of the trampoline. Um, even though it's below zero, I'm going to use just h1 and know that in the end that this should be a negative number. And then we have some h2, which we know is one meter. My delta x is zero to end up with, and it gets compressed by the same amount of h1. So you can see that h1 in this case affects both our gravitational potential energy as well as the elastic potential energy. Which in any case should be really clear as long as you draw a good diagram of before and after. Free body diagram, we technically have two separate stages of the motion. If we want to be really strict about it, because while you're on the trampoline, not only do you have Fg pulling you down, you have the force of the trampoline pushing you up and you're in the air, you're only affected by the force of gravity. In any case, both the gravitational force and the trampoline force, those are conservative forces because it's being tracked with gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. So what we can say is my non-conservative work is zero. Next step is of course our energy balance as we write everything out and the rest of it is just solving. So that's zero because your speed is zero before and after. That's zero we just talked about. And so we expand our potential energy into the two terms, which this is zero again. And then we sub in h1 for delta h1. And so if we want to solve for h1 in this case, it's a little unfortunate that we have an h1 term here and h1 square term here. But you know how to deal with that stuff already because whenever we have a square and itself in the same equation, that's a quadratic equation. We can solve using the quadratic formula. To do so, we rewrite this to make sure that it has a form of a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So this zero is very critical. There's my a term my b coefficient as well as my c coefficient which is negative in this case. Knowing that we have value for k, my h2, as well as my mass, I'm not going to write it all out because it's it gets quite lengthy, but those are our two answers. Remember though, we expect h1 to be negative. so. We don't always pick the positive because in this case it's the negative that makes sense. So at the bottom when the trampoline is stretched out the most is 0.42 meters below where it was flat. Now of course it's possible for the trampoline to be compressed a little less if some of that energy were to have been made up by the chemical energy coming from the jumper's muscle as they contract but we're told to ignore that in this case.